Hello, I'm Yubri from Smallfish. Welcome to Fish School 2.0 Episode 3. Sorry, I lost my previous layout, so I'm using mine. Before getting to this episode's topic, I want to add on to something from the previous episode. If your player doesn't move, then the problem is likely the apply friction method, which has a second parameter called stop speed. If you are moving below that speed, then it's going to stop you from moving, and for some reason, by default, it's set to the crazy amount of 140 units per second. To fix this, just go to the apply friction method and manually write the second parameter to something more reasonable like 20. Right, let's get back on topic. In this episode, we're going to make a simple hammer map, load it into our scene, create prefabs to place inside of it, and lastly, modifying our camera so it doesn't clip into walls. First off, let's navigate to our project in the assets browser, and here you can create a folder called maps. Right now, you're kinda forced to have a folder named maps to have your maps in. In the future, I bet it's going to be changed. For now, let's go inside of the folder and create our first level. Right click, new asset, new map, name it level underscore one, and double click it to open with Hammer Editor. Now, if you're new to Hammer, I suggest checking out Eagle Swan's tutorials, which you can find in the description. But for now, we'll make a simple map with what we have. To move around, it's almost like in the scene editor. Right click and WASD. Here in the outliner, there's a list of everything in your map. Ignore the fact that it says entity. It's just a leftover from the old system. Let's remove everything. We're just going to create geometry for this map. Everything else will do that in the scene editor. In fact, if you're looking at this video in the future, I bet you'll already have similar tools in the scene editor, rendering this step useless. Let's go to the block tool, select just a quad, on the bottom right set the grid size to 128, make sure grid snapping is on with this magnet icon, and now draw a single quad and press enter. I want the minimum building block size to be 128 by 128 and for them to follow the grid, so for our map, I'm going to extrude everything. Go to the Translate tool, change the selection mode to Edges, so we can select the edges, select one, hold Shift to extrude, and create your level one block at a time. I'll start with the main chamber, something small, like 3x3 three three blocks. Hold Shift while selecting edges to select multiple, and then drag them out. Let's do a small corridor leading to a bigger room, which is where our snot will spawn from. Extrude the middle one, and now start creating your big room. Right, looks big enough. Let's just do another small room on the back of the big room, kinda like a surprise for the player when they manage to clear out the big room. There we go, pretty minimal level design, but this is just the first level, we'll have more complicated ones in the future. Let's create walls. If we did the geometry correctly, we can just double click the edges to select all of the outer edges, hold shift to extrude, and extrude two blocks tall. Tall enough that our player won't make it out of the bounds. We're almost done, as you can see, only one side of the map is visible. The outside is transparent, which is going to let sunlight go through and ruin the immersion. So let's change selection mode to faces, double click to select all faces, and look for the tick and faces option in the tool properties. This is going to create walls for our map, but before selecting it we need to change the grid size, which is used to calculate how thick the walls will be. 128 is definitely too much, so let's go with a reasonable 16. Now tick in your faces, and you've got outer walls, looking good. Now, we can't just save our map and load it, we need to compile it to generate collisions. Go to this gamepad icon and select fast compile. You're not going to need anything else, this is going to end up being removed or reworked anyways. Click build, oops, I forgot to save, just click yes. And now, since our map is simple, it should already be done compiling. Let's close hammer and go back to the scene editor. Let's create a new scene called level 1 in our scenes folder. Add an empty object, which will be our map, rename it to map for convenience, 
Reset the position to 0, I dislike having the map being offset. Add a new component, lookup map instance. To load your map you'll have to manually write down the path, but I'm sure in the future it will let you select from the asset browser. To work properly it needs the full path, so just right click your map, copy path, and then paste it in the field. If you've done everything correctly, your map should load in the scene, else you'll have to check the console to view what the problem was. Our map is looking a bit dark, we are missing an environment light. Let's go steal the sun from our first scene. Let's steal the skybox as well, I like it. Ctrl C, Ctrl V, much better already. Now to move our player over, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to create a new prefab. Currently there is no difference between a prefab and a scene. When editing a prefab, you are using the scene editor. With prefabs, you can just drag them into the scene through the asset browser which is what we're gonna do now, or even load them in through code, which is what we'll need to do when ours not multiplies itself. Let's go to our first scene. Select the player, right click, and convert to prefab. Let's create a new folder. Call it prefabs. Call it player and save. Double click to edit, and you'll see it's just the scene editor containing our player, the game object camera we parented, and all the components we gave it. If we go back to our first level, we can just drag the player prefab inside of it. Save and play. If you wanna go full screen, just press F3. Now our little level feels alive. I wonder what happens if we drag more players in. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll just get rid of them. Look at this nasty camera. Now that we have walls, it clips inside of them. Let's modify it so that it doesn't clip into walls using ray casting. Moving to our own update code on the player, add some brackets here to expand on the camera code. We'll need to cast a ray from our eye position, which is where the camera is rotating around, but our eye position is in local coordinates though. So let's create a new eye world position variable that returns us the current world position of the eyes. With this lambda expression, whenever we try accessing the eye world position variable, it uses the player's local transform to translate the eye position into the world coordinates. Moving back to our camera code, let's create a ray cast. Just move the camera's local transform code from here to here to a new variable called camera transform. Calculate the world position of the ideal camera position using the point to world method. And now create a new ray trace in our scene starting from the eye world position and ending in our camera's ideal position. Make the ray 5 units thick, so it doesn't go in between small gaps. Ignore our player game object and all of their children. Ignore any game object with the tags player, which reminds me, go into our player prefab and to the main player game object Add the tag player. Press enter and save. There we go. And finally, run our trace. Let's manually set the position and rotation of the camera. Set the camera's world position to be the end position of our ray trace. And for the camera's rotation, let's just keep it like it was before, setting the local rotation to whatever rotation we calculated here with the old code. Save and play. Awesome, it works. Now our camera won't go through walls. One last thing. When we go really near a wall, the camera goes through our head. We can fix this by reducing our camera's zinear, which is the distance at which it will start rendering the frame. 
If we go to our player's prefab, select the camera, you can see that the default Zenear is set to 10. Let's try putting 0.1 and saving. For changes inside of the prefab, you have to reload the game, so hit play again. And now, you can admire the beautiful hair made by Dendu. That's it for today's episode, maybe experiment with your map, or create new levels. In the future, we'll look into progression and loading different levels, but I'm not going to show myself creating them, so you better make your own. Thanks for enjoying our fish tent.